So it's been a while since my last couple of videos. I've had a bunch of people reaching out, whether it's been on YouTube or on Instagram, asking where I've been, how I'm doing, if I'm making more videos, if this is all I need for getting more front camber and so on. I kind of want to just be completely honest on why I haven't uploaded or even posted on Instagram in a while. Just the last couple years, I feel like the car community has completely changed. Um, a lot of my friends and stuff like that have disappeared in the car community I feel like so I've been losing a lot of motivation and interest in my car I've had times where I've been thinking of selling it but I feel like I can't part ways with it and it just don't like quitting just in general so everybody that's been waiting for more content and wanting to know things I've been trying to respond whether it's been in comments or in messages on Instagram and on YouTube there's a couple things that I wanted to address just because of one of my last videos with the LCA extensions. A lot of people have bought them and I feel like there's a little bit of a misconception about them. And so in my opinion, I kind of wanted to go over those things and kind of help people and guide them. With that, let me show you. Like I was saying, it's not trying to be a tutorial of any sort, but I kind of want to give some guidance and some free game to people that have been wanting to know some of these things because a lot of people have reached out to me about them and asking about it. So I feel like in my opinion, I would not buy them if you have no camber in the front at all. And I'm not talking about just simple little slotting like on your strut bracket or even just replacing and putting these bolts with or without these. This is not going to give you enough camber in the front to be able to even run the LCA extensions and you will most likely have issues with your axles. And that's one of the problems that I ran into. And that's kind of another reason why I didn't post a video. And I wanted to make sure before I even made another video with my process of doing all this to make sure that I have all this like knowledge and know what I'm talking about or at least what I'm doing and showing if people are going to follow along or asking or whatever it is before I even do it because I don't want to try to do this and people follow along or even me doing it and running into these issues because your axles will have a huge pain in the ass and they will most likely not work. All right, so one of the things that I did to be able to get more front camber and this isn't necessary, but I ended up getting custom strut brackets made and you can see at the bottom it has a way bigger slot so it ends up making it where I can tilt the spindle just enough so then I can use the LCA extensions. So in my opinion I feel like the LCA extensions are better to look at them as not a way to get more camber but in the way to counterbalance the way that the strut ends up having issues and the way it sits from when you do end up getting way too much camber in the front with like slotting or making some sort of bracket that you can put at the bottom and extending the spindle so you can tilt it enough or extending the strut like lower bracket so you can end up tilting the spindle enough to be able to get enough front camber to run the LCA extensions and so with that being said when you put too much front camber on the strut what ends up happening is the strut is going to end up pushing back further. One thing that you can see is right now I have my sway bar link is not connected. I have it just sitting up here because there's a couple other things that I'm going to address and try to fix. But most likely tie rods are not necessary. You can most likely use your OEM ones. You don't need to use these. I would do everything and then if worse comes to worse, then use them. The extended ones are such a pain in the ass and I ended up having to cut part of the threaded part of the tie rod to be able to fit the actual extended tie rod itself so in my opinion i would not get the extended tie rods i would hold off and wait until then but strut bracket with some sort of way to be able to tilt it enough and being bagged or static is going to make a difference my bag was sitting way too close inside the strut bracket once i put this strut bracket on or inside the fender wheel, I mean. And so it was rubbing and I had to sit there and get the LCA extension to counterbalance it. But I also had to get new camber plates because my camber plates had ended up busting. And so the joints or the like bearing or 
ball joint or whatever you want to call it ended up having issues and breaking on one of them so i might as well had just replaced them and so i just got the L, uh low life projects extended camber plates which are not necessary depending on if you're static or bag for me i'm just i ran them just because i needed to replace my old ones anyways but with doing this and you're pushing a lot of the stuff back that i've found out you're probably going to have to figure out ways to clearance for things moving back further like the sway bar link and one thing is I know that a lot of people that do these things with more front camber in the front They usually get rid of the sway bar and the sway bar link for me. I want to keep it I don't know how it feels without driving with one on this car I want to keep it so with me what I'm doing and what I figure that I'm going to do to be able to solve that issue and try it for now is I have these little like spacers that you can call them for sway bar links that's all I typed in on Google sway bar link spacers and they're just a small little like quarter inch little spacer and at the bottom I already have it on and the top at first I wasn't running it when I was testing it out and what ended up happening is you can kind of see there's a little bit right between the brake bracket and the sway bar link it ends up hitting and so I'm going to have to shave down or figure out a way to clearance the brake bracket. But I bought another set and if I mess them up by grinding them down, trying to clearance or whatever it is, I have another pair on the way so I can replace them. Or even if I decide if this doesn't go the way that I want it to do with camber and I just start running to issues, breaking axles and all that so on, I'm most likely just going to end up putting this, I wouldn't say back to stock, but at least to a much simpler setup and just run something different so I won't have no issues because I really want to drive the car more and be able to take it out whenever I want to because this is a hassle and I can't drive it really to work because I'm not too sure on if I'll break a wheel or freaking to beat or whatever it be I haven't had any of those issues for the most part I've drove this car stanced out like as much as what my previous setup was which was like negative six negative eight in the front and like negative 10 12 in the back and drove it from the Bay Area all the way to SoCal and had no issues there and back. This is definitely going to be a lot more extreme, especially matching camber front and back for the most part and trying to get around. I think when I tested it on was about negative 15, negative 18 in the front or so. And I'm probably going to end up matching the back and fitting it to just be fairly close to it or even matching is what my goal is. But at the moment with these issues that I'm running into as me doing the strut bracket for number one is a must then doing the LCA extension to counterbalance the effects of the strut bracket and straightening it out to make it so then this bottom part isn't smacking the fender well and all these issues and centering out my camber plate so that the bag sits right in the middle and has plenty of clearance for when it airs out and I still have to adjust my height so I have to adjust it because you can kind of see is right here when I did my fender video. I did this and I haven't showed this unless people follow me on Instagram is I aired out and kind of just said forget it and just said YOLO let's just try it and see what happens. And I aired it all the way out and not realizing that these fenders are going to sit differently than the OEM ones. I ended up crunching them and so it isn't bad and you can see it's not terrible like I'm running my nail across it and you really can't hear it until there and there's only at certain angles you kind of see it but in my opinion I, I really don't care I just want to enjoy the car and drive it again and take it to shows and just hang out with friends for the most part so I'm not trying to do anything crazy and in, in that aspect I'm just building my car because I want to build my car so if it something happens like this then whatever if i need to replace it i can replace it but i'm not in no big big rush for it or anything at this moment so but like i was saying number one i would say strut bracket make sure you somehow get enough camber on that whether it's the lower bolt or whatever and extending and making a bracket or getting the custom strut bracket made second then you can run the lca extension and that's only to counterbalance the effects of what the strut bracket is going to end up doing with those issues. And then third, you're going to have clearance issues, whether it's with the sway bar link 
or your break bracket and so on. And this could be different for every single person. And but this is what I'm running into. And so with me, what I'm gonna end up doing is I removed my sway bar link out the way and put these like spacers on as you can see. And I'm thinking of either disconnecting the brake bracket or the brake line, pushing it back and grinding it down just a tiny bit, about a quarter of an inch or so to be able to clear it. And hopefully the sway bar link doesn't hit and it should give me enough clearance. If not, I bought a second one and so I can replace them and put new ones on and whether it's if I go back to a different setup that's much simpler than this or even as this being able to drill this one out and being able to mess it up or whatever it so be. But I figured I'm going to end up trying to figure out something. I'm not going to record it just because I don't want to show cutting up the brake bracket and all this stuff. I might as well just do it, show you after and then go from that point on. So with that being said, I'm going to try to figure out something to be able to clear the sway bar link from the brake bracket so then I can turn and full lock. But the one issue too that I was running into before I go and try and figure this out is with the sway bar link, when it's on, when I turn full lock, yeah, it hits the brake bracket when I'm turning here and there and I'd get like a weird clunking noise, which is just, it just sounds ratchet and I was not trying to go for that. But right down at the bottom back here, when you turn, your strut and everything turns with the car. So the sway bar link was clipping right on the back and resting on the back of the sway bar or on the back of the strut bracket and causing the sway bar link to look like it was gonna bend or have issues. And that's another reason why I'm running these spacers to push things back further since I've already basically had to push things back to get more front camber and keep the axles in a good position to be able to run these. I'm gonna try to grind down the brake bracket to be able to clearance the sway bar link so then it gives me enough room because I feel like from the point from my last, one of my last videos of the LCA extensions, I didn't show the strut brackets because I didn't have them at the time and I didn't know this is, was, oh, and I didn't know this is what I was gonna need to be able to actually run that i thought i had enough camber with just a small little slot and the bolts but it's definitely not enough i wouldn't buy the lca extensions until you get enough camber from your strut bracket and whether it's putting a bracket in between the bottom of your strut to be able to have a gap here of putting a bolt, have a bracket and another bolt to extend it and tilt the spindle enough, or even doing what I did. I decided to be a little bougie and decide to get custom ones made, which costs a little bit, but I decided to do that just to be a little bit safer and just to look a little bit nicer. But once you do the strut bracket is number one, LCA extension, it would be second. Tie rods is not a must. I would wait until the very end, but like I was saying, this is not supposed to be a tutorial. This is just my process. I'm trying to give free game to people that are asking because I've been having a lot of people in my DMs on IG and in the comments on these videos asking about things and messaging me. So in my opinion, I think what would work, the sway bar link with these spacers should give you plenty of clearance, just figuring out something to do with the brake bracket. And I had also bought, let's see, these little brackets. And I was thinking of running these instead of like cutting the actual brake bracket itself and just using this to be able to relocate the brake uh, brake line. But I feel like I don't want to do that because I don't want to have no bracket for the speed sensor on this backside. And I don't want to zip tie it. I don't want to do that. If it comes to it, then I have a like option C to be able to do that. But for now, I'm gonna try my first option. What I was thinking that might work is grinding down the bracket just enough so the sway bar link has enough clearance to be able to make it. If it doesn't, I don't necessarily have to run this top spacer. I can leave the bottom one, which helps clear. But this top one of the sway bar link, I probably can take off. But the only thing is, is like I was saying, when I full lock, I'm gonna get a clunking noise from the sway bar link hitting the back of the bottom of the strut bracket, which is kind of annoying, but at the same time, I don't drive this car a lot. And if I start running into these issues and breaking things, whether it's bending the sway bar link or 
do beating or freaking cracking barrels on the wheels or axles breaking or so on like I'm probably just gonna not run this setup and I'll probably just sell the bits and pieces to anybody that wants them but from that point or until that point um I'm gonna try to do my best to try to get this to fit because I really want to try to get this done and I have to smog the car pretty soon too so so one thing I wanted to show before I start grinding this down because I'm not gonna film it I'm just gonna do it and then show you the end results but you can see the bracket itself and you can see right on the end of where it was hitting there's not much that I have to take off so I'm thinking of cutting just this flap and getting fairly close to the end and maybe I can push down this back part of the speed bracket or speed sensor and like bend it in and then not have to worry about it because my original idea was if this doesn't clear and doesn't have issues or if it does have issues and it still rubs or hits is just pushing the bracket or the brake line itself back further and drilling a hole to make a new part so then I can have it where the brake line is out the way and there's plenty of room to be able to play to move it around but for the most part I think maybe just grinding off this flap so then I don't have to disconnect it because with the second idea I'm drilling a hole having to cut this whole part off just so I can have to disconnect it and push it back and I don't really want to bleed the brakes so and I want to try to do it this way grinding off that little bit of this front part and just enough of the brake bracket so then the brake line clears and the bracket clears so then there's no issue on the back of the strut but this is full lock for example and you can kind of see where I was talking about if this sway bar link is connected of where it comes around and when it turns all the way around to the back it clips all back here and has issues and I don't want to have or has hits all back here and I don't want to have these issues I'm going to try just cutting off that first little bit of this bracket grinding it down and if I need to the speed sensor can get pushed back there's plenty of room in the back right here you can see but hopefully I don't cut anything I have upgraded brake lines that are sitting right now I'm not too worried about it so I'm gonna get into it and then I'll show you after what it looks like once I'm done all right so wanted to show a little bit of progress so far so with the bracket I ended up cutting the brake line out not like actually cutting the brake line but cutting the bracket away from the line so I can pull it out um, with doing so it makes it where this isn't a closed edge so then the brake line isn't fully 100% secure in there but what I was thinking is once you put the clip in I drill these two small little holes to be able to like zip tie and like make a little X or something but also too with the sway bar link with the way that it rotates it clips here but now it's clearing but when it pulls all the way to the end I had to shave this down and it was rubbing along the side to the speed sensor and with this way it doesn't do it as much but it still clips here but I think the bracket like this will work so I just set up the jack so you can kind of simulate the suspension under load and then I put the spacer back in the sway bar link and I'm gonna check to see how clearance is because I don't think it's gonna be any better with the spacer in the bracket cut compared to having no spacer and clipping because the sway bar link when I turn to the left it ends up just rubbing and like pinching all on the back of the strut but I'm gonna try to see with clearance with the bracket if it'll make any difference
So to be honest, it seems like with this spacer that's on the back and actually tightening down the sway bar link to actually test it, I think it honestly might be better. I ended up not hearing any noise and clunking and it definitely clears and especially simulating with the jack having it up to simulate like having weight or a load on the car on the suspension or whatever seems to be doing well and the brackets in there and everything I know for sure when it turns to the left on this side it's fine the opposite side is going to simulate like whatever this is turning right so with turning right it got pretty close to the speed sensor but I don't think it goes far enough to go past it to end up getting stuck on it to be all the way through and be able to get stuck and rip it back. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it should be fine. And with the brake line, or not the brake line, with the airline tucked up and out the way, it should be fine. I think I might try leaving the spacer on the sway bar link to see if that helps because it seemed to give plenty of clearance for both ways. So. The worst thing might be instead of having clunky noise i might get fairly close to the to the speed sensor but i think it might be fine so i'm gonna do the other side check a couple more things lock things down and then i'll check back in so bracket for the driver's side i started it i pretty much ran out of cutting discs as you can see but this side for the passenger side, it's pretty much all locked down. I zip tied the bracket for the brake line, spacer in for the sway bar link, speed sensor, everything clears for the most part. No weird clunking noises, not too bad. It still rubs on the sway bar link on the back of the strut, but it's not as bad as it originally was without the spacer on the sway bar link. But I'm gonna get the cutting disc, finish this another day, clean up my mess and stuff for now, but other than that, if you made it this far, thank you guys. I appreciate all the freaking support. I'm going to call it it right here. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or even any like comments or anything that can help me along my way of my process of what I'm going through right now is greatly appreciated. But other than that, I'm going to call it it right here. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to try to do my best to keep pushing these videos out. So peace. See you in the next one.